rapid fire news you can use today. We're gonna to start off by talking about a FedEx report that came out last week um, and it, it caused a little panic in the economy, it caused a little panic in the stock market last week. We had a, a, a one day in particular where we lost a lot of value and it was primarily as a result of the FedEx report. FedEx is one of those canaries in the mine shaft where they're, you know, what they do really has a bearing on the economy and it's kind of one of the leading indicators. And they reported that um, it, during the previous month, about 600,000 packages uh, that they would normally be able to process were unprocessable. They did, they, they are short on employees, like everybody else out there. Um, we went to one of our favorite restaurants last week and they said that they had to shut down for seven days because they lost uh, the kitchen help that they needed. It took them seven days to recruit somebody to get into the kitchen. Um, I think I told a, a story last week about uh, one of the more famous local uh, teppanyaki places, a uh, 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 Japanese restaurant in Sacramento has nine locations. They had a large job fair and they were only able to recruit three people. Even though they were having sign-on bonuses, they had to now shut down eight of their nine locations because of the same problem, lack of uh, you know help. There, FedEx is having the same problem. In fact, they they focused on their Portland facility. Uh, they were only able to process last month about 65% of the normal amount of packages. About 25% of the packages that came through had to be diverted to somebody else to deliver because they were just unable to do this. Um, as a result, they're they're in the red. They're losing money when they should be going crazy. Uh, kind of a sidebar here. If you guys are planning to get anything online for Christmas, I'd order now because uh, there's going to be an acute shortage uh, probably in the next uh, couple of months uh, to not only getting product because of the fact that everything is sitting out there in uh, Los Angeles, Long Beach Harbor on boats. It's, being, it's unable to be offloaded, uh, but also because now the delivery companies don't have enough people to deliver. Um, it, it was interesting. I was in Northern California again last week and there's signs all over the road that, you know, even at the fast food restaurants, they're offering starting pay as high as $19 an hour uh, for, for folks to, you know, come work at Arby's and places like that. Um, they just cannot get, cannot get uh, employees. One of the one of the reasons, one of the bigger reasons, and this goes to the second thing I want to talk about on rapid fire news you can use, uh, the pre-COVID economy will not return, according to the Fed. Um, uh, last week, uh, one of the Fed, uh, yeah, it was actually the Kansas City Fed, um, the head of the Kansas City Fed told um, Wall Street Journal and did a report for, did a, an interview with Wall Street Journal saying that we're not going to be able to get back to pre-COVID type levels of employment, which was about three and a half percent unemployed. It's not going to get back down there because of two things. Number one, people got used to living on less and living on the government dole. In other words, getting money from the government to sit home. Um, a lot of these guys have now gamed the system and they're going to become permanent non-employees. Uh, if and, and there's been an interesting trend where uh, the government, the federal government stopped the COVID unemployment things on, the, on Labor Day earlier this month. Some states have continued to supplement that, New York and California in particular. So we're seeing people actually migrate to these states so that they can get higher levels of unemployment. Now, mostly California is having a mass exodus, people wanting to leave California for a lot of various political reasons but you actually have people coming in so that they can get on the government dole uh, and get higher levels of unemployment. So it's, the, it's a bizarre deal. And number two, the second reason we're not gonna get back to pre-COVID levels of, uh, of employment slash unemployment is that a lot of folks use the opportunity during COVID to retire early. Uh, a lot of companies offered early retirement, a lot of companies and a lot of folks um, you know, at an earlier age than they had planned to, went ahead and retired. And you're seeing large uh, businesses that have a, a gap 
uh, at their middle management and senior management level and and even all up and down their pay scale you know people use the opportunity that uh, covid provided and they like that lifestyle so they just retire they just decide they're not gonna they're not gonna do that anymore so um that's you know going to make a big difference uh across the board uh when you have more people unemployed more people not making a regular income and just are on the the dole from the government you know a lot of folks can't afford their lifestyle a lot of people have scaled down a lot of people are abandoning houses they were living in and getting something new they use the opportunity to shift to a lower level of um, housing and uh it's creating a, a gap now at the, the higher price houses in particular across the US. There's many less buyers for those. And, and that's typically what you would see in a downward economy trend. I've seen this a couple of times before in, in both 2000 and in 2008, 9, 10, where the higher priced houses as well as the lower priced houses have longer days on market because there's less people who wanna buy in that range. The, the safe harbor for you folks is always going to be first time home buyer housing stock. So, uh, you know, kind of the mid range uh, B neighborhood, upper C neighborhood are going to be the, the safe harbor, safe havens, uh, because there's always going to be first time home buyers who are going to want to buy and there's always going to be government funding, i.e. Uh, GSE money, uh, FHA and that type of thing available for those folks who want to buy in that uh, in that particular uh, zone. So that's where I would focus. I would stay away from the higher priced houses and things like that. Uh, other things are going to affect the economy, believe it or not. And this all comes back to everything I think stems, of course, it stemmed from COVID, but it was a, um, it was an overreaction to COVID. So what happened is, uh, for example, and we've talked about this a bunch of times in the ports of Los Angeles, Long Beach, which is the largest port in the United States. There's now 85 or 90 ships sitting out there. They're stacked up all up and down the coast waiting to get offloaded. It's because when COVID hit, uh, the ports got rid of their very, very experienced longshoremen, um, you know, because they weren't offloading, they were offloading minimal amounts of boats. And now as we try to restock everything, um, you know, we just, we can't because there's nobody there to offload these ships. There's not enough people there to offload these ships. So uh, what, what happens is in the short term, it creates inflation because what you need is sitting out there on those boats. And by the way, New York announced over the weekend, the port of New York, which is I think the second or third largest port in the country, they've got the same problem. There's 40, 30 or 40 ships sitting outside waiting to get offloaded in New York. So it's happening, it's a cascade effect. It's happening across the board. Short term, it will cause inflation to go up, uh, long and, and shortages of things to go up. Uh, long term, it will actually really hurt the economy. And, you know, we could go into a recession, depression. Uh, you know, a lot of these prognosticators are calling for 2023, late 2022. Um, you know, for this kind of stuff to hit. And that's just going to create more profitable properties for you to be able to buy during that time. And the last thing on news you can use, there's, you know, this uh, one of the things as a result of the fact that everything's sitting on a boat someplace off our shores and can't get offloaded are things like the, the car industry, the automobile industry. Um, the predictions that the Wall Street Journal made uh, last Friday were that there's going to be $210 billion of lost revenue this year, 7.7 .7 million less units of uh, vehicles sold. Not that there isn't a demand, there just is no supply. Now you drive by any car lot, I would challenge you guys to drive by any, just about any car lot, and you're gonna see a lot of empty space where those new cars used to sit. You know, we don't have any 2022 cars out there, very, very minimal amounts of them. Uh, because wherever there was one, they got bought and there's no replacement. And, and you know, it's a, it's a year long process. And primarily in the auto industry, it's because of the chips. Um, we have abdicated our worldwide role as a chip manufacturer to primarily the Chinese and some of the, the in Malaysia and Indonesia and places like that. 
So, uh, you know, this is something that, uh, you know, the previous administration, Trump administration tried to prevent to get more manufacturing done here and, and penalize uh, businesses who wanted to buy overseas and, and promote the ones who wanted to buy uh, internally. But we never got far enough into that deal. And so we are now at a distinct disadvantage worldwide because we cannot get stuff uh, chips in the case of automakers. I mean, it, it is, it's the stupidest thing. I, the, the article that talked about the shortages focused on RVs and believe it or not, there is, you can't buy bolts that strap down the toilets in recreational vehicles. And so they can't sell any because nobody has bolts. They're sitting on ships, uh, to strap down the toilet, which I guess is an important thing if you own an RV. So, um, you know, it's, uh, I don't want to laugh at it too much, but, uh, you know, this, this is the weirdest thing. When you start looking into this a little bit, you're going to see that we've really got a shortage of, uh, of products and it's, um, you know, it's primarily due to COVID, but it's actually due to the reaction of COVID. So nobody took the long view. The guys who did, the guys who stocked up or the, the folks who provide uh, you know, weren't so subject to overseas manufacturing of their raw ingredients uh, are doing really well right now. So uh, mixed bag out there, uh, long term, uh, it will hurt the economy. Short term, it will increase inflation. So we're going to have what you call, and I predict here you're going to have next year what we call stagflation. So it's been many years and you can look that up. Uh, you can Google stagflation. I won't spend a lot of time talking about that. I might talk about it next week um, and, and kind of go through that and how that works. But uh, that's that's what we got news you can use wise uh, for today. It's a deep topic. There's lots of nuanced uh, issues um, and, you know, it it is changing pretty rapidly, but I, I think if you guys look back to, we even called this in February this year with the, the boat situation, boats starting to stack up. Uh, and ultimately that just affects a lot of industries that we've got out there. So a combination of more people want to get a government paycheck, uh, more people wanted and retired and uh, less people wanted to work. And then we have this acute product shortage for critical supplies chips, bolts, things like that, that then we cannot overcome at this point. Uh, you know, it, this would be a good opportunity to redevelop some of the industries out there that we had, the steel uh, making, uh, timber industry, things like that. Um, you know, but uh, it's, we've got a real problem in the, in the economy. And I think it's going, you're going to see it, but it's going to take a year or two until it really manifests itself.